Well, let's get started. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of go through. And uh, my name's Randy Riscotti. I'm in the, the Sparks Nevada Club. Uh, partnering with me today here is Shauna Gaines, uh, Reno Midtown Club. And this is going to be a little different. Um, first off, I'm, I'm one of those guys that has no filter. So what I say, you know, it's not going to be read off a script. I'm not going to, you know, we're, we're going to do that differently here. So I'm going to share my screen and start my little presentation. But so can everybody see the screen? Yep. Yes. All right. Yes. So this is, um, you know, I chose this photo for two reasons. One, I took it, well, three reasons. Two, it got into the Rotary Magazine, which I thought was kind of fun. And, and I didn't even submit it, but they, they took it. And, and three, there's light at the end of the tunnel. You know, we've got this uh, COVID thing and I guess we're going on autopilot here. So that's not good. Oh boy. Hold on a second. <laughs> we have to, uh, we'll, we'll turn everything off here. And what did I tell you, Shauna? I borrowed the presentation from somebody else. Here's what we're going to talk about. Um, you know, why do we need to update our rotary brand? And, you know, when should we do it? How can we do it? And what can you, you know, what help can you get to help get it done? Um, why are we doing it? Why do we care about brand? And, and this study, this is called the Siegel Gale study. I don't know if anybody's heard about, heard of this, but if you have, raise your hand, feel free to comment. But back in 2012, RI, you know, did a study and they, they, they commissioned this study, it spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, and I'm actually gonna switch screens here and share screen stop sharing this one and go back to a different one. Um, so can you see that? Whoops, oh well, that's okay. This, um, can everybody see me scrolling this image? Okay, yep. this is the Siegel Gale report. It's a, a I don't know how many page PDF document. And, you know, just looking through, we are our biggest impediment. We've got all these logos. We've got, you know, each little subgroup of Rotary, whether it's Polio or Rotaract, or well, Rotaract's a little different, but we have all these different, different areas. And here you can see, We've got all these, it's unclear who is in charge and how decisions are made. Uh, I'm going back here to a couple slides. If you ask 10 people what Rotary stands for, you get 10 different answers. Um, I, I, I brought that slide up just to show you the, that book has so many findings. It's a great way to cure insomnia, but it tells how we have this identity crisis is, is really what it says. And um, because of that, a lot of times people don't know who we are. So there's the identity crisis, as I mentioned. Um, all these different logos and things are associated with, with Rotary. The new logo, anybody heard of the new logo? It's not new, it's eight years old, probably going on nine. It's, it's. Um, I'm sorry to be sarcastic. I live, I've, I've been doing this public image job for three years now and, and everybody comes, well, the new logo, it's not new. <laughs> it gets kind of frustrating. Um, so, Have you heard of Rotary's essential elements? I'm going to tie this back to the to the to our our uh, brand and our, our logos and such. 
brand drives membership. If you have a good brand and people say, I want to be part of that, and they know who we are and what we do, then you see it feeds over to membership. We have a good brand. You have, you're out there on a project in your club and you put up a sign, you're cleaning up a park, you're, you're painting a building, and, and it says this project you know, is being done by Rotarians, then that's your, that's your outward image and people see that. And, and then they, they say, maybe I'm interested in that. And they join. And when they join, if they stick it out long enough and get the bug, they'll contribute to the foundation. And then the foundation gives us money back, which we could then turn around and increase our footprint and our brand and everything in the community. So it's kind of a cycle. And that's why we use this, this little graphic here to talk about how do we grow rotary? How many? Uh, Randy, can I, can I chime in on that? Absolutely. So this little trifecta thing came out at LLA, I don't know, two or three years ago. And our club has found it immensely helpful to have a, a very clear vision when we take on any kind of project or what we want for our future as a club. And we always keep these three components in mind whenever we're doing even a park cleanup, or if we're taking on a major project, or we're even just doing a social, how are we keeping these things in mind? Because foundation is often the, the most challenging one to communicate, especially to younger folks. And so we want, and we know how important it is. So when we keep that at top of mind, when we are approaching something, it doesn't get left behind and becomes more and more clear to our members and our guests, what we're all about in general. And to Randy's point, it creates that consistent branding, that consistent message. So people always know what we're up to and they can count on it. Thank you. Um, a good, good example of, of that question, you know, rhetorical question for yourself. Has your club ever put out a flyer and be honest, didn't even really put a rotary wheel on it or you didn't feel that it said rotary and you, 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 you look at it after the fact and you go, God, we don't, I mean, down in the bottom, it says, oh, yeah, we are you know, sponsored by the Rotary Club of XYZ. But did you really, does, does the public know that? Um, so when are we going to do this? We're going to get to some fun stuff here. Um, we're going to do it now. Okay. And I say this because this is, a, this is an email that I received as being part of the public image community within Rotary from... No, none other than Holger and Shekar, okay? And they, they, they being Rotary paid big money for this study and we still haven't got brand adoption. We still have people without logos, but using the old two color wheel, not using the proper master brand signature. And I'm gonna tell you all about that in a couple minutes here. But this basically, in a nutshell, says the goal is to have every club be brand RI brand compliant by June 30th, 2022, end of Anita's year. Okay, we need to get on board, no pun intended with Anita's theme there, but we need to get on board with, with getting the logo. Um, no more pickaxes and shovels adorning your logo, no uh, porpoise uh, thing because you're on the West Coast and you, you know. Uh, no trains in my case for Sparks because we're the rail city, supposedly. Um, nothing. Okay. I mean, you, you need to display the logo as, as, as it's designed to be used. Um, a lot of clubs like to adorn their logos. So this is the first time that the top leadership of Rotary has put out, you know, basically an edict saying we got to get it done. Because we're not competing with each other. My club's in, in the Reno Sparks area. I am not in the business of trying to steal members from Reno Midtown since we have two other members here in, you know, in the Midtown club on this call, okay? If someone wants to go to Midtown, that's probably the club they're gonna choose because that's that fits their needs, fits their lifestyle, fits whatever. But yeah, we are competing with the Kiwanis club. We are competing with, with the Lions club and so forth. But Within Rotary, we've got eight clubs in Reno. Just, you know, we, there's, we're not trying to, I'm not trying to like make my logo so different that it stands out from the, from the Midtown Club. That's not the goal. So we are gonna watch a little video 
And I want to tell you a little story about this video first. A couple, three years ago, uh, at that time, the, the regional public image chair happened to be Vicki Pulitz at the time. Um, she challenged me to come up with a little video that would tell everybody what they needed to know about the logo, you know, in a few minutes. So as I was researching it, came across this logo from Wall Street, a club in, of Wall Street, and they actually have a bull for their logo. So that became the no bull logo video. And you can see where it went downhill from there in a couple seconds, because you're gonna hear a lot of bull in a couple seconds, okay? So let's watch a little video. And you have a little background music that you won't get out of your ears for the rest of the day. Hello to all of our presidents, presidents elect, public image chairs, webmasters, agents, agents, DJs, and trainers, PDGs, anyone involved in. Can you hear that? Whew. It's a little it? quiet, Randy. If you can turn so it up, that would be nice. For the year within Rotary, we all have much to learn and only a short period of time to learn it. With this in mind, I'm asking for five minutes of your time to talk about our Rotary brand. Let's get started. What do you notice about the graphic? The logo is the first thing you see, the tip of the iceberg of your Rotary brand. But it is really only a small part of your brand and Rotary brand experience. We have an opportunity to strengthen our brand by making sure we are using the logo correctly. And this video will help you do that. No bull. That was an actual club logo. For many years, our Rotary wheel stood alone as our logo on signage and communications materials. Although the words Rotary and International were embedded in the wheel, they were hard to read from a distance. As a result, the general public did not always recognize Rotary's involvement in a project or activity. That's why we decided to expand our official club logo to include the word Rotary next to the wheel. In the upper left on the screen is Rotary's master brand signature. Down to the right is what is known as the Rotary Club Signature. The Rotary Club Signature consists of the Master Brand Signature plus the club name and should be used instead of the Master Brand Signature on all club-level communications. Please note the emphasis on all club-level communications. This carries over to any custom shirts your clubs may want to produce as well. We wouldn't want any bull shirts. I told you the old two-color rotary wheel has been replaced with the new single-color, more contemporary wheel. This is the wheel you should use. Here's one of the don'ts. Stretching the logo is never acceptable. The rotary master brand colors are a very specific blue and gold. In this slide, we have a couple of examples of someone's good intentions gone bad. Changing the colors to match a holiday theme or a rotary fundraiser program are not acceptable. Changing the font on the word Rotary or the club identifier is a no-go. The font is an integral part of our brand identity. Let's talk about the mark of excellence, AKA the wheel. Always use it big. Our mark of excellence is a symbol of our leadership. It should appear large on high impact communications to make a bold statement and promote a sense of urgency. Keep it near the master brand signature at all times. On a special note, the mark of excellence should always appear with one of our signatures and never alone. But like everything in life, there is an exception to the rule. It's preferred to use the wheel by itself for the profile picture for your club's Facebook page. Really, that's no bull. Applying special effects such as embossing or drop shadows to the master brand signature are definite no-nos. Rotary has been working hard to show the world a consistent brand image. Applying these types of effects only helps to dilute the message we are trying to send to our communities. Spinning rotary wheels are a big nope. Another nope in this image is incorporating the wheel into the design. The wheel should always be a separate graphic element and not part of the design. When working on a joint project with another organization, the rotary master brand signature should always be displayed on the left with a gray vertical line to separate our brand from the partner's logo. This is what is known as a Rotary Partner Lockup. I wanted to make you aware that Rotary has created the simplified signature for digital small use in confined spaces. As you can see in this slide, the words Rotary and International have been removed from the wheel for better reproduction when used at a reduced size. 
I'm going to make this easy for you. If you have any doubts, use this style of logo. How's that for cutting through the poll? Want to learn more about the proper use of our logo and branding materials? Please visit the Rotary Brand Center for more info on how to properly display the Rotary Master Brand signature. While you're visiting the Rotary Brand Center, look for this guide. You can download it under the Our Story tab on the Brand Center homepage. This is the no bull guide to have. Thanks for shooting the bull with me today about the proper use of our Rotary logo. Need more information? Please contact your district public relations. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> Well, I guess it's got to finish before I can move it on. Um, any questions or thoughts on that? Hello? I think being able to let everybody know where they can get copies of the proper logos if they feel they don't have the correct one on hand now. Well, we're going to get there. We are. It's a good question. And um, let's, let's keep moving on. But... Um, the how, how are we gonna get there? Um, what tools do you have? So one tool you have to get your word out is the Club Runner website. District 5190 is a Club Runner uh, district, meaning most of our clubs, I'd say 95% of them use Club Runner for their, for their website. Couple advantages there that I think people miss Within Club Runner, you can, you can create bulletins. You can obviously create your website. You can put up club events that you can share with the outside world. You can do emails both to internal members and you can actually keep a list of friends of your club. So if you've got you know, city leaders or mayors, or whatever you wanna put them in there, you can email them too. Uh, club flyers, you can, well, it's not really part of this, but you can host them on there. And, and Club Runner is also integrated with RI, so it tracks all your dues and such, so, uh, and, and members. Um, having a Ophelia, good website. Lucy and Olga are professionally trained midwives. Oops, we don't want to go there. I told you that was going to happen. Um, so social media. Um, I'm, I'm putting out the popular ones. Obviously, people have heard of Facebook. Instagram, LinkedIn's a good one for, for a professional organization. And what you post on LinkedIn might be when we have more of a professional type speaker available that you might wanna put out there to the business community. A um, little different audience than maybe your friends on Facebook, um, but it's another way to get the word out. And um, of course, YouTube, if you have a video and you wanna host it on, on YouTube, you can do that. Um, Ophelia. Okay, we got to get rid of it. Now, I want to talk about the newest thing, and this is why Shauna is here. There's a story behind that little icon there. That's her phone icon that I stole off my phone. I said, okay, she's going to call me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blast her here. We have a new thing with the district this year where we, we added a podcast. And how many have heard the podcast? I know Shauna has, Kathy, Grass Valley, Mindy, oh. Mindy Mustang. Well, Shauna, tell us about podcasts. What do okay. you need to know? Yeah, so a podcast for any, has anyone here heard podcasts in general? Like, do you listen to podcasts in general? Okay, great, perfect. So um, the idea, this was an idea from our club president who has a long commute to and from work. And she said, you know, what would be really great is if we had a podcast for the district. So that way I, you know, anyone who listens could stay up to snuff, not just on district news, but on really cool things that clubs are up to, uh, great tips on how to attract or retain members or her, hearing about really interesting projects internationally or, or in our own communities, et cetera, because our district is huge. And so we don't always get a chance to 
know the inner workings of like what's going on in Grass Valley if I live in Reno or what's going on in Elko. And so this was a way to also build stronger community amongst all of us in District 5190. So it is new. <laughs> so the idea just came out around this time last year and was picked up by DG Berta and incoming DG Anita has requested that it continue through her year. And so what we want to provide it as is a professional platform. It is professionally produced. So just so you know, this isn't like some weird thing I do in my garage. Um, I have my own show that is also professionally produced. So this isn't my first rodeo. I take it very seriously. And I handle all of the interviews with research and diligence. So that way, when somebody is coming on the show, whether that be uh, somebody from our district leadership, because we're going to talk about some big initiative with membership or even DB Fennell from the Reno Club downtown. She really wanted to talk about the Bicentennial Park Project, all of the trials and tribulations that led to that, but it was a great learning experience for other clubs that could glean something out of what she went through. So it was valuable to others. So another thing that we have available on it, because we don't want it to become a dumping ground and just getting really chaotic and cluttered, much like Randy's message around wanting the brand to be consistent. So the messaging is clear. We want to be clear with what the podcast is for. So for example, if you have a fundraiser coming up and you want to get the word out about it, instead of having a show about that thing, because then everyone and their mother would <laughs> overrun the show with like just an episode about the fundraiser, we'd like to extend the opportunity to purchase an ad that could run on the show uh, for every episode leading up to your event. And then all of the proceeds go to pay for the show to be made. So again, being professionally produced that producer's time costs money. And it also costs money to host the show in the cloud where it does all the magical things to get to all the places that you can listen to it. But that way we can have more input from clubs. So if you have, uh, like Elko has their grand Fondo coming up and they want to get word out about it everywhere. It's in the newsletter, it's on social media, but they could purchase an ad on the podcast. So that way those who are listening to it can get that information there as well. And so if people have a really fantastic um, ideas on things that they know would lift up the whole Rotary community, we want you to have a voice there. I would be the person, cost for ad. Great question, Kathy. Super honestly, I don't know yet. Uh, we want to make it fair, but we also want to make sure that if we only have one ad a month, that it actually is helping to make a dent in our podcast production. I probably won't be more than a hundred dollars, quite frankly, but I, that's just me kind of pulling that out of thin air. I will have to talk to Anita about it to make sure that that's clear. And we'll put together a little kit that I can easily email to someone. Perhaps we can have it on the district website in the podcast section. So if people have a request to be on the show or would like to purchase an ad, you can fill out a form and I'll receive that information. And if you ever have questions, I'm always the contact person. And my information is on the district website. There's a little button at the very very top of the page on the right that um, has, it says podcast on it. Just click that. You'll see every episode. If you don't have a podcast listening app, you can always listen to it on the website. They're always posted to our social media. And for those of you who do already listen to podcasts, you can download it um, anywhere you already listen to them. So how you, Kathy, great question, how you locate it. If you currently listen to podcasts, whatever the app is that you do to listen to like if you use Apple Podcasts, if you use Google Play, if you use Stitcher, if you use SoundCloud, you search for um, the download and it's, it's called the download, a Rotary District 5190 podcast is the subtitle and it's out there. So if you click on the link, um, I think through social media, if you click on that, you can find it in all of those cloud places. But if you um, just type in that name, the logo is a big rotary, obvious blue and white thing. <laughs> you kind of can't miss it. And I'm going to update that for this incoming year. So it's even more slick. And honestly, Randy, I want to make extra sure that it's rotary compliant. I just, you know, I don't want to be the one st stepping off the line as I'm here in a public image session. Um, and then so far, Ideally, we would like to have at least one episode a month come out, um, whether that be around the theme of that month for the whole Rotary International. As we know, there's a theme every month, um, but also too, I've interviewed some really cool people in this community that I wouldn't have met otherwise. And I'm super grateful for that opportunity. And I have super special surprise things coming up to end our year, which will be really fun as well. So I always encourage your feedback and your participation. Cool. 
And now you know, if you went to LL, or excuse me, if you were at Rally last weekend, you now know why Shauna Gaines was given the jumping in with both feet award by District Governor Berta for just being over the top and, and being willing to do anything. She took on the district newsletter, the podcast got it off the ground. Um, she, she, she handles it. It's, it's really fun. And by the way, as you can see by her, now she's addressing her kids. You know, she's got a couple of those in the background there that all want to be fed today. So, um, you know, I, I'm going to change subject, change gears here a little bit. We've got a little bit of time left, but what do you want to talk about? What's driving you crazy as, as you know, as a club member, public image person? What are you, what are you hoping to find out? Opening the floor up here. Who would like to join in? I'm sorry, who's this? This is Okay. So, when I jumped on, I heard you say, what did you say? No kickbacks and shuffles. Okay. The Grass Valley Rotary has a long history of using our little gold miner, and it says Rotary Public Rescue. I know I'm not going to use that. Kathy, um, Kathy yeah. I, don't, I don't know about the rest of everybody, but I can't seem to hear her coming through. Can somebody confirm if it's me or? I can hear you, Kathy. It's just um, a little okay. muffled and quiet. Can you hear me now? That's you you perfect. Me? Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. What a difference opening up my laptop made. Okay. Sorry, guys. Um, so my pickaxe and shovel gold miner. Um, if I remove the words um, Rotary Club of Grass Valley, can I still use my little gold miner somewhere in my correspondence? As yeah. long as I use the master brand Rotary logo as the main um, well, image. Um, the, the short answer is, yeah, you can still have a, a, a pickaxe, and I wasn't directing that at you, by the way, but there's a bunch <laughs> of them around the, the, uh, the community, um, uh, mining heritage. The, sure. the point being is, is, you know, when you see the Rotary Master Brand signature, it's, it's not encumbered by anything else. So what you could do is what's, do you remember in the video, they had the thing about the, the master, excuse me, the rotary partner lockup? Yes. Which was the chubby unicorns little example. You could put right. your miner next to that, but it would have to say rotary club of grass valley and then the vertical line and then, you know, your miner or, you know, serving the area since, you know, John Muir or whatever you put in there. Um, you know, great. You could, you could do something like that. Okay. Would it be um, a, a practical thing if we do a mock up and send it to district for confirmation that it's okay? Absolutely. That's okay. We, we, Perfect. We have a public image team. Yes. Um, um, Shauna is is one of the members of that team. Stacy Graham, uh, Vicky Christensen, um, myself. We've got you know. It, we're all here to help. So if you if you sure. need some some thoughts, I do want to share something here. That let's go. Judy has a question too. We see you, Judy. Okay, Judy, why don't you go ahead? You gotta unmute your first. Sorry about that. I had it unmuted and then I was waiting, so I put it back on. We have. So I've been told, I haven't looked into this, but we have a couple of old like brass signages around the community that would be very expensive to replace. And somebody read somewhere that there is a historical exception for a couple of things. There is, there, there is. You, you, you know, you are not required to tear down any existing signage. Um, that's not part of our, our, our goal. Now, if you are redoing it, like let's say you were gonna rebuild this structure, you should probably consider, you know, that would be the time to do it, to put new signage on there. But no, there isn't anything regarding, you know, we're, we're asking for everybody to go out and, you know, tear down old 
you know, brass signs and stuff like that. Thank you. That will help. <laughs> yeah. um, but anything new, we're, we're, we're looking to get there. Um, yeah, no, we don't have a problem with anything new. We've just got supposedly a couple of antiques around. So don't be talking about me that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been around a lot longer than you. So. <laughs> okay, I am going to share my screen and I'm going to show you something new. Um, and I mean, when I say new, can everybody see the district website? Yes, yes. Okay, when I say new, I finished this at about 545 this morning. So that's how new it is. I'm gonna go over here to member resources into public image. Everybody see where I'm at? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And over here is something called the D5190 logo bank. And before I click on that, how many people have tried to use the Rotary Brand Center? Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Is it, it's still a good place to go, but I'll be the first to admit it's got a few issues, right? Yes, so sir. we're going to go to the Rotary Logo Bank and every club. So if I go to Grass Valley and I want to download the old, the, the normal logo, I click on the thing and got a little typo there because that one I. Let's go to Grass Valley South, I have to fix that. There's your logo. So I want the new logo, boom. The, the simplified logo, you can now download that to your computer. So um, you wanna go to Nevada City 49er, let's pick on them, cause they got a really, that's what their logo should look like. Not that red and, black blob thing they've been using since Paul Harris joined. Um, <laughs> so this is, and then also I'm not finished with this yet, but over here will be the, um, what's called the lockup with the new theme logo for the year. And every club will have that. All you need to do is click on it and download it. These are what is known as a PNG file portable network graphics file, which is has the transparent background so that you can overlay it on top of other images without having that white box around everything. That's fantastic, Randy. Thank you for doing that. Um, wow, that's that's makes everyone's life so much easier. Uh, it's, and I hope it's gonna be easier for everybody. It will, and it will make it easier for them to be compliant for sure. Um, which leads me to a sub, thank you, uh, which leads me to another subject on this, uh, the, the theme logo. I'm not sure what the goal with the theme logo is from a public image standpoint. It, it, it's, it's something that we rally around as Rotarians, but if you're using that logo by itself for identification of your club, I, I think you're missing Anita's boat because no one knows. Does that make any sense? I mean, I, I, I see every club's website, district, you know, Facebook page, and, and a lot of people will use that, you know, theme logo as their Facebook identifier, their profile picture, and it doesn't really say, hey, this is a Rotary Club. It's like, it's the blob or whatever. Again, the, so the point on this is be careful about, you know, who are you marketing to? When you put up signage, when you put up a flyer that you're going to post at the local Starbucks or you, you know, you're going to put posters around town, do you, you know, is that for you as a Rotarian? Because you understand what that logo means and, you know, it served to change lives. Or is it for your neighbors that are not Rotarians? And if it is, if that's the goal, then it really should have, you know, this Rotary type logo on it because no one knows what the theme logo really is. I so Randy, quick, can I ask a quick question, sure, Randy? Um, so we, you probably in 2018, you passed out some thumb drives that we got at Pets. Yeah. So thumb drives are still usable as far as the these current logos. Ex except for the theme changes every year. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Right. 
Yeah, th so the, those logos are still good. This is a much easier place to get them. Every club member can have access to it just by go there's no the the pardon me, the 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 brand center is kind of a pain in the butt and it doesn't really work well and it crashes a lot and it's not very user friendly. So I got so sick and tired of it, I made this. So if you're in the Rotary Club of Amador, this is where you go. And boom, logo. Don't have to hit the refresh button 65 times to make it come up if you've ever done that and tried to make your own logo. Um, Isn't that not supposed to be red though? Can you, did you just say why it's red? Oh, Rotaract is red. Rotaract oh, Rotary. Is oh red. sorry. I just totally, my brain made that say Rotary and I was like, what? Okay, no, thank no, you. This is actually correct. Yes. <laughs> uh, more uh, coffee, more coffee. Send over. Randy, qu question? Sure. What's the, what's the purpose of the simplified wheel without Rotary International in there? Why, why would we have both? So it can be smaller because if you make it really tiny on a, a website or a business card or whatever, and it's so small, you won't be able to read Rotary International in the wheel. So they just take it out. Ah, easier to squish. Okay. Thank you. But using like a t-shirt, sometimes it just can't read it. So they've actually approved this for, for use. And both of these are approved. It, not, to be honest, if you read the, 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 the Rotary guidelines, you could use this as your sole Rotary logo if you felt like it with the simplified logo there's nothing that says you have to use the other one you know specifically um probably best to use it except for those situations where it's going to be printed really small or you know so what other questions you have no one's do you have do you have any members in your clubs? Let's have a little fun. Do you have any members in your clubs that that join, you know, at the turn of the century that don't want to give up the old two-color blue and gold rotary wheel and kind of fight you on everything you want to do? I see some smiles there, but there's there's well, yeah, it's it's a challenge to uh, um, to get it. I I guess in my heart. Um, this common brand and this common image is really important to me because I think, again, we're not trying to be in a vacuum. If I go to Truckee and I see a Rotary master brand signature and I go to Grass Valley and I see a man and say, hey, these guys are pretty good. They're all over the place. If I go to Truckee and I see a skier you know, with a rotor on top of a rotary wheel or whatever, and I go to Grass Valley and I see a miner on, you know, it's like, are they the same organization? I, I don't, I, man, we're not, we're not multiplying our impact by, mm -hmm. by trying to get our, our individual identities out there. Um, I do realize that some people, you know, might say, well, gosh, we want to have fun. You can still have fun, but let's make sure that there's a common um bond you know that, that says rotary and people get it um and do me one big favor because i i've seen this numerous times and it, it just just gets me put a rotary wheel on your flyers i i, I not not the wheel the master brand signature but put any one of them i've seen flyers that have gone out where they literally do not have any form of rotary wheel. Yesterday's wheel, tomorrow's wheel, the 200 year old wheel, whatever, they, they literally, you don't even know that it's a rotary event. It's just a, it's a page of, of text without any, you know, the wrong wheel, the right wheel, no wheel, no, no, no brand identification. That's kind of disheartening. And to think about it a different way, your clubs, um, do a ton of work in the community and, and we're not getting credit. I'm looking at, at the Midtowners here in Reno and, and there's a school in a, eh, let's say not the best area of town and it got pretty run down and they got out there and busted their rear ends and, 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 you know, pulled all the old plants and kind of run down stuff along this street. And it's, it, I'm driven by it. I used to drive down it every day to go to work sometimes. And, and uh, it, you know, they've done a phenomenal job. 
there should be something up there that says Rotary Club of Midtown. You know, there should be something at the the uh, what you might call it house in Grass Valley area. I can't think of the name of the house that you guys adopt and take care of, but the that you know great beautiful garden there. Um, so I think I'm I think I'm done. I'm only going to move over to our contact info here. Um, probably have to reshare the other video. Any thoughts, questions, comments? Uh, boy. I learned a lot. Thank you. Please call us. I'm going to, um, we are more willing um, to um, help in any way we can, if you'd like to review something or if you'd like to find a, a that says Bishop Sunrise. I like that. I didn't change that apparently. I stole this lower this, this presentation from another one we put together for a lady at Bishop. So um, give us a call. We're, we're, right. we're more than willing to help out. And thank you so much for, for joining yep. this morning. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate it all. Thank, Thank you. you, everybody. Okay. Have an awesome weekend and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Yeah. Ditto. Good job, Randy. Thank you.